Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, pag-uusapan natin ang estimation of population mean when the population standard deviation or the sigma is known. Without further ado, let's get this lesson started. So kapag sinabi nating estimation, imagine that this big circle represents the population. And out of this population, kukuha lang tayo ng representative represented by this rectangle at yun yung ating sample. Itong sample, dito lang tayo magko-compute ng different statistic like the mean, standard deviation, and afterwards, out of this data, we will estimate it to get the parameters that will describe naman the entire population. Since dealing with the entire population will be time-consuming, so nagsasampling tayo and then nag-estimate na lang afterwards. There are two types of estimation for the population mean. The first one is the point estimate. It is the specific numerical value of the population mean. Dahil specific nga siya, isang number lang talaga siya at wala tayong confidence level or hindi natin mamamessure kung gaano tayo ka-confident na yun talaga yung actual value of the population mean. And the best point estimate for the population mean is x bar or yung tinatawag natin na sample mean. On the other hand, meron naman tayong tinatawag na interval estimate from the word itself, interval. Ito yung estimate naman na may range of values used to estimate the population mean. At ginagamit sa interval estimate yung nakuha nating value sa point estimate. Ito ay pwedeng gamitin whether the population standard deviation is known or unknown. And tulad nga nung sinabi ko kanina, this video will be about the case kung saan na yung standard deviation ng population ay given. And it also uses the confidence interval. Let's remember this formula. 1 minus alpha, where the alpha is also called the significance level. So, in other words, when we add the confidence level or the confidence interval and the significance level, they will add up to 1. So, paano nga ba kinukuha itong part 1 na to, wherein the population standard deviation is known? We will work on this formula. We have the x bar, which will represent the sample mean or the best point estimate, tulad nung nabanggit ko sa previous slide, plus or minus no magkabilang side, yung E, and this E is the margin of error. Pag sinabi nating margin of error, this is the difference between the actual value of the mean and the best point estimate. To get E, we need to use this separate formula, the Z value of alpha over 2 times the population standard deviation all over the sample size n. So again, ito yung mga pertinent formulas na gagamitin natin sa mga susunod na slide. So punta na tayo ngayon sa guided example. A researcher wished to estimate the number of days it takes an automobile dealer to sell Ferrari cars. That's why he take into consideration a sample of 40 cars and it had a mean dealer slot of 68 days. So on average, it takes 68 days uh, in order for a dealer to sell a car. Assume that the population standard deviation is 8 days. And we have to find the best point estimate of the population mean and the 95% confidence interval of the population mean. So, dalawa yung pinapahanap sa atin. First is the best point estimate and next one is the 95% confidence interval of the population mean. So, step one, let us list down the different given for this uh, guided example one. For N, we have a sample of 40 cars. Uh, yun yung sabi dito sa example one. Tapos, 68 days yung mean, kaya yun yung X bar. Next, for standard deviation, meron tayong 8. And for the confidence interval, we have 95% or 0 0.95. 
once we already know them, we can now solve for the alpha. Again, alpha and the ci will be added and then they will sum up to 1. Or in other words, alpha is 1 minus ci. 1 minus 0 0.95 or 0 0.05. Once we already know this alpha, let's set it aside. I-determine muna natin yung unang tinatanong, which is the best point estimate. So, gawin natin abbreviated na BPE of the mean, population mean. Again, the best point estimate is already the sample mean, which is, in this case, 68. So, pwede natin isulat 68 days. Nasagot na natin yung first question. This is already the best point estimate for uh, the given situation. We are now left with the second question, the 95% confidence interval for the population mean. So, let's move to the next slide. Let's identify the z-score for alpha over 2. At this point, kailangan familiar na tayo sa paggamit ng z-table. At tingnan natin dito, yung alpha natin ay over 2. So, ang alpha natin ay 0 0.05, pero dahil over 2, this is now equal to 0 0.025. Once you already have this, you have to look for this at the table. Tingnan ito sa body ng table para makuha yung kanyang Z-score. What you can see here is the standard Z-table na gagamitin natin. Again, ang hahanapin natin sa mismong body ay 0 0.025. So, hanapin natin siya dito. Let's use a highlighter. So, 0 0.025. This one. Dahil ito yung ating nakuha na alpha over 2, tingnan natin yung kanyang header, row and column. We have negative 1.96. So, ito ngayon yung ating z-score. Negative 1.96. But since real-life example to and hindi naman tayo nagko-consider ng negative sa ating number of days, gawin na lang natin itong positive. Since symmetric din naman yung ating z-curve. This is 1.96. Again, ginawa na natin siyang positive. Next, we solve for the margin of error which is e. Recall, dun sa ating slide kanina, e is the z-score times the population standard deviation all over the square root of n. So, ang z natin is 1.96. Ang ating population standard dev, that's 8. And then, square root of 40. We can directly input this in our calculator. We have 1.96 times the quantity of 8 over the square root of 40. And then we can round this off to the nearest hundreds or the nearest second decimal number. Therefore, RE is 2.48. Now that we already know E, we can now go back to the original formula for the interval estimate. Again, we have the best point estimate minus E and then less than population mean tapos yun namang best point estimate plus E. Again, our BPE is 68 minus we have 2.48 and then copy the same numbers. Let's just change this into addition. So, 68 minus 2.48, we have 65.52, and then it's 70.48. So, ito na ngayon yung ating interval estimate at 95% 
confidence interval. So again, ang unit natin dito ay days. So we can say that at 95% confidence interval, the mean number of days for a dealer to sell a Ferrari car is between 65.52 to 70.48. Let's move to the second example. Dito sa guided example 2, we are dealing naman sa isang publishing company na nagpa-publish ng college textbook. And their research department conducted a study and it involves a random sample of 25 uh, textbook that has a mean price of 145. And the standard deviation of the population is already given to be 35 pesos. And we have to know the point estimate for that uh, situation and 90% confidence interval. So again, let's list down the given and solve for alpha. Ang n natin dito is 25, obviously, because we have 25 sample. The mean is 145. It came from the sample. Ang ating standard deviation is 35. Class interval is 90%. Now, for alpha, we have 1 minus CI or 1 minus 0 0.90. This is 0 0.1 or 0 0.10. Using these values, we can now answer the first bullet for the point estimate. For the BPE of the population mean, this is just equal to the sample mean, which is 145 pesos. Next, identify the z-score for alpha over 2. Again, our alpha is 0 0.10, but we are dealing with alpha over 2. Dini divide natin. This is 0 0.05, and then you will look for this at the table. So, meron tayong 0 0.05. Sige, I'll give you a few seconds, five seconds to look for this at the table. Pwede nyo ipause mo na yung video. After five seconds, i-reveal -re natin yung z-score for 0 0.05. Again, turn it into positive already. Going back sa ating table, 0 0.05 is not exactly seen in the table. It's between this. 0 0.0505 0 .05, and 0 0.0495. So what we can do here ay kuhanin natin yung kanilang average ng z-scores nila. So we get the average of 1.64 and 1.65. 1.64 plus 1.65 over 2, its average is 1.64. Five. Ito ngayon yung gagamitin natin to get the margin of error. We solve for the margin of error. Again, the margin of error is E times yung z-score natin times this quantity. So we have 1.645 times ang ating population standard dev is 35 all over the square root of n, which is 25. So we have 1.645 times the quantity of 35 over the square root of 25. Let's round it to the second decimal number. We have 1152 or 1152. After getting the margin of error, we can now write the interval estimate for the population mean. Again, our x bar is 145 minus 11.52. Hanggang sa 145 plus 11.52. So 145 minus 11.52 is... 133.48. Lagyan na natin ng unit, which is pesos. 
And then this one is 156.52 pesos. So to interpret this, uh, we are 90% confident that the population mean of the textbook is between 133.48 until 156.52. Tandaan natin na kapag nag-co-conclude tayo, lagi dapat kasama yung confidence interval. So in the next video, pag-uusapan naman natin paano kung itong ating standard deviation ay hindi given. Paano natin i-co-compute yung interval estimate.